In this episode, we're gonna show you how to build this totally custom fuse and relay panel to feed power to all of our electrical add-ons. Where the heck are we? This can't be right. Class has started, pay attention. The heart and soul of this project is preparation. We started by making a need and a wants list. On it is everything electrical that we can think of having on our rig, even if we won't be getting to it for months or even years down the road. Now's the time to start making plans for it. Then, we researched what's needed to run each accessory. The amp set draws determines if it needs a switched relay, what size, along with what gauge wire is needed to feed it. Step two, we researched, then decided on what components we needed. After that, we drew up a simple wiring diagram, our main focus being on making it as simple and reliable as possible. Step three, we came up with a complete list of parts we need and got them on order. In the video description below, you'll also find a complete list of the parts we're using, along with their numbers and where you can buy them. So real quick, let's run through the basic components we'll be using. This is the foundation for our system. It's a panel made by Powertrays. They're a Colorado-based company. And this is quickly becoming the go-to electrical panel mount. The positive side of our battery comes in through this. It's a 100 amp circuit breaker. This is our last line of defense against a catastrophic meltdown. The negative side first comes into this simple grounding terminal. It's just a bolt we cut the head off of. Both the positive and negative then go to these multi-terminal bus bars. From here, the power will be distributed and will allow for future expansion. This box holds the bigger fuses that we need to power our higher amperage stuff like big light bars and uh, our compressor system. This is a high amp relay for one of our high amp accessories. We got it with our rigid light bar from Southern Style Off-Road. On the lower or normal amp side of our system, most of our stuff is gonna go through this. It's a very popular do-it-yourself all-in-one fuse and relay box. These are what we'll be using to make our panel easily removable from our rig. Now it's time to do the custom work on our panel. But first, let's run through the basics of how a relay works and why you need to use them. Inside a relay is a big switch capable of enduring the high amperage that's needed to power many accessories. That big switch is turned on and off by a much smaller electromagnetic switch inside that's turned on and off typically by a much lower amp-rated dash-mounted switch. So you see, the low amp power from the switch and the higher amp power going to our accessory never come in contact with each other. The reason why we want to use relays is to reduce the amount of high energy going through our wires behind our dash and the dash mounted switches or ones that are made to go in the dash are only rated maybe 5 amps at the most. If you try putting more amps through these or their wires, you're at a really high risk of your rig going up in flames. In the video description below, we list a website that was instrumental in helping us find parts, part numbers where to buy them, and as well as other technical information. Now, full disclosure, we are not electricians, nor claim to be, and we know very little about electricity. All we did was Google and research, and... Uh, you can do it too. You can do it too. Now, you'll notice that this Busman relay box does not come with terminals in most of these holes. We have to put those in ourselves. Now let's look at a diagram to see how and where the power travels through this. Now it's very important to note that this is a view of the underside of our Busman box. Positive power comes in from our battery to this terminal here. And then that feeds an internal bus bar that feeds power to all these holes, which aren't really holes when you look at the bottom of the Busman box. This is where our power begins, and this is where we start by plugging fuses in. 
We're building our box to accommodate five fuse with relay circuits and five fuse only circuits. So only every other fuse will be supplying power to a relay. The other five standalone fuses will receive a wire on their outfeed side. You may notice that the relays appear to be plugged in upside down according to the lettering. That's on purpose. In the wiring configuration we're using, they need to be installed that way. Another thing, the biggest fuses we can use are 20 amp for any of our circuits coming out of the relays in this box due to the 20 amp rating of the connectors in our plugs down the line. The 14 gauge wire coming out of the fuse only circuits cause them to be limited to 15 amps. Any electrical circuit is only as strong as its weakest link. Know the amp ratings of everything you use for this and everything you hook up to it. Now we'll mount our relay box to the panel. The folks at Power Trays have cut a hole to fit it perfectly, along with a couple of slots to feed the wire through. We drilled these smaller holes ourselves. To save space on the underside of our panel, and since the bolt holes line up with one another, we'll be bolting our main bus bars on either side of the relay box. We're going to start with our fuse only circuits, and they plug in to this hole, this hole, this hole, this hole, and this hole. All the unused holes in our relay block are plugged off, making the interior bug-proof and watertight. To prepare the end, strip about a quarter of an inch of the insulation off. Then we put the seal on the end. Next, we crimp the terminal on. We're going to take a little dab a flux and stick it right on the connector where we'll be soldering. And then we solder on the terminal. Push up the seal and crimp over the ends. Then just push the terminals into the box. You want to push them in until they click. Now to come out of the other side of our fuse that feeds the relay, we need to run a jumper wire from this terminal at the fuse up to this hole, which is where our number 30 terminal of our relay is. Now to complete the circuit through our relay and out to our accessory, we bring a wire off of the number 87 terminals, which are right here and these wires will trim to length later. For the incoming low amp dash switch power, we come in to the number 86 terminal. Now the ground for our low amp dash switch power that goes into terminal 85 on our relay is already supplied to us through another built-in bus bar. Here, 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 and here. So that's already done for us. And now we can put the rest of these jumper wires in. To keep everything tidy and safe, we protected our wire bundles with these mesh sleeves and shrink tubing. This spot is for our outgoing circuits, one for our relayed and one for just fused. This hold down bar we made ourselves, it's a piece of scrap aluminum. The wires coming in from our dash switches to the relays will plug into this. That'll stay down below. We've assigned and marked each of our circuits coming out with a code, R for relayed, F for fused only, along with a number. This we have marked on the box, all the wires, and written down on a card we'll be keeping in the glove box. Now onto our high amp relay circuits. Each circuit is getting its own 10 gauge positive wire from the bus bar to the box holding the big fuses. Right now we only have two circuits through these big fuses. We'll add more as we need them. One goes directly to our compressor in the back where it has its own built-in relay and nearby switch. The other circuit goes right to our big light bar relay. A short wire goes from the fuse box to the number 30 terminal on the relay. Then an output wire 
comes off of our number 87 terminal and goes off to the light bar. Then a ground wire comes up from our negative bus bar to terminal number 85. Terminal number 86 gets a wire coming from our dash switch. We're almost done. Now we can hook our main cables up to our bus bars. Mary already has the one hooked up to the internal bus bar on our busman box. And then she just hooked up the one to our external bus bar. Now we'll hook up the negatives. So again, Mary already has the one ground wire going to the internal bus bar in the relay box. And now she's hooking up the external bus bar. Now she'll just hook them up to our main negative terminal. For the higher amp side, these two here, we can't send them through a plug like this because this plug takes this kind of fitting and it's not rated for a high enough amperage for what we need. So we use the same type of fitting that we use in the busman box in these and that'll, uh, that'll get our amperage through. The panel from Power Trays makes this installation so easy to do. The one side bolts in using existing tapped holes on the inner fender, and they also send along this leg that goes down and bolts onto the fender through an existing hole, making the tray rock solid. Okay, as you can see, it's in. Um, these bolts going into the fender are a little tough to get to, but they will go in, just use a long extension on a ratchet, they'll go in. This leg is on, you'll see we have a four gauge cable from our positive going to here, a six gauge negative coming from our battery and going to this terminal. Now, when we go to put another system in, more lights or whatever, all we need to do is run a, a wire from the dash switch, put a terminal on the end, plug it in here, then Put in a fuse, the appropriate sized fuse for it, and uh, it'll run through a relay. And then you just come out of this plug with another terminal and wire off to your accessory. It's really that simple. And uh, to put in a big amp circuit, all we have to do is bolt on another one of these big relays right here, run the wires, put in the appropriate sized fuse, uh, and we're all set there. Hard part's over from here on out. Everything's going to be easy. Well, we hope this video has helped you to build your own custom power distribution system. It really is simpler than most people realize. If we can do it, you can too. So once we start adding accessories and then decide on what switches we want to use and where we want to mount them in the dash, we'll likely do a video on that too. And don't forget to check out that link in the video description below. That'll give you a lot more information that we didn't have time to get to in this video. If this is your first time watching one of our videos and you'd like to see more, hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to ring the bell if you want to be notified.